Najee El Ali was perhaps both the most loved and most hated Arab political cartoonist in recent history, celebrated for his stinging critiques of Israeli and Arab regimes along with the United States. He created more than 40,000 drawings during his career. The Palestinian artist was assassinated three decades ago, but his legacy still lives on. This month, to mark the 30th anniversary of his death, Istanbul's Ba'im Sis Sanat Gallery is holding an exhibition of some of Naji Al Ali's most prominent artworks. Through cartoons, he analyzed the relationships between the United States, Israel, and the Arab regimes, and ultimately what that meant for the people of Palestine. Al Ali was born in 1938 in the Palestinian village of Al Shajara. After the 1948 Palestinian exodus, or Nakba, he lived in a refugee camp in Lebanon with his family. Al Ali is best known for his creation of the character Handala, widely recognized as a leading figure of Palestinian defiance. Handala appears as a barefoot 10-year-old who turns his back on the world after Nakba. Al Ali spent much of his life in Lebanon and Kuwait, where he worked for Kuwaiti daily newspaper Al Qabas as a political cartoonist. By 1985, he'd moved to London to work on the international edition. In 1987, Al Ali was shot in the face and mortally wounded while outside the newspaper's London office. He died five weeks later in hospital. Nobody has ever been charged with Al Ali's murder. Sadly, justice is still yet to be served for Naji and the millions of people who continue to be oppressed today. For more on this, visiting senior fellow at the Middle East Center of the London School of Economics, Ian Black, joins me from London. Ian, thank you for joining us today. I want to start off by asking you, why did Naji choose to draw such a young boy to represent Handala when he had a blank canvas to draw anything he really wanted to? Well, Najee and Ali explained uh, what was behind uh, this, this very famous figure, with Hanzala. And it was, it was really very simple. Uh, Najee Ali was a 10-year-old boy in 1948, 47, 48, when the Nakba took place, when the Palestinians were expelled or fled or were driven out from the territory that then became the State of Israel. And that was the formative event in his life and indeed for a whole generation of Palestinians. It was the defining experience for him. And Handala was stuck at that point. And Najid Ali explained that it was abnormal for people to be taken away from, driven out of their homeland. And Handala would never grow up. He'd never be older than 10 because that was fixed in his mind and in historical memory as the moment of disaster. So this cartoon figure, this little boy, became the symbol of that experience, both for Najil Ali himself and the people whose aspirations he very much came to uh, represent in his drawings. It was a personal and political moment that was frozen in time, and of course still is frozen in time. So Najee drew Handala in such a way where he used his physical appearance to convey different meanings to his audience. Can you tell us a bit about the different uh, me, uh, messages he wanted to send out to people? Hansel is a little boy. He's got no shoes on. He's barefoot. He's wearing ragged clothes. His hair is spiky. Um, he's skinny. He's not particularly impressive looking. And perhaps most of all, um, we haven't seen his face, or we haven't seen his face for a very, very long time. And Najil Ali explained, he was often asked about this, um, why was Handel's face not visible? And his answer was again, that he was looking uh, back, looking to that lost homeland, and he wouldn't turn round, his face wouldn't be visible until he was reunited with that homeland. So the symbolism was very deliberate, quite heavy-handed in a way. And there was another aspect, too, of the drawings of Handala. If you, uh, if you pay attention to them, you'll see that 
he has the little boy from behind has his hands clasped behind his back. And that was something, again, explained by Najee Al Ali, that Hanzala represented rejection, rejection in the 1980s in particular of what he called American ideas to liquidate the Palestinian cause, the idea that there could be uh, a resolution of the Palestinian question without the return to the lost homeland. His clasped hands meant symbolized the fact that this kid representing his people wasn't going to accept what was being offered. He was only going to accept, was going to hold out for the ultimate prize and the only solution as he saw it, which was a return to the lost homeland. So as you said earlier, Handala represents millions of people in the Middle East and around the world. What does he mean for people who opposed the Israeli apartheid? Well, Hanzala has become a symbol, if you like, of Palestinian resistance, steadfastness. The Arabic word sumud is, conveys exactly that, that for all their plight, Palestinians are divided and exiled and occupied, living in many different places, only a minority of them in their own homeland. Some, of course, live inside Israel. Uh, many more live uh, under occupation in the West Bank and Gaza, and others, of course, live far beyond in the wider diaspora. So it was, the idea was to represent that people, to stand for the, their aspirations, and to, and to serve, if you like, as a reminder of the injustice done to that, uh, to that people. And he's become a famous figure uh, in a way, very much recognizable, I think, internationally as a symbol uh, of that cause. But of course, Najel Ali's death, his assassination here in London actually 30 years ago, um, was a complicated story and it perhaps sheds uh, a little more light on the reality. He's, he became a symbol, but the circumstances of his creator's death reflected uh, a complex political reality. He was almost certainly killed by another Palestinian uh, acting for people who didn't like his attitude. Uh, so it's a complicated story beyond the simplicity of the symbol that he does represent. Well, it was a pleasure having you on our show today, Ian. Thank you so much.